In my video I recorded yesterday, I talked a lot about Optimus and the software that's important to the Tesla bot that Tesla is developing. And during that process, I briefly brought up the camera system that Optimus is going to be using and the fact that it's different from Tesla's full self-driving in their vehicles. But I think the camera system actually deserves more attention. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. It's good to be back in my studio again, and I actually have some things to add to my collection. <laughs> Got my AI Day 2022 pass and a nice little, uh, you know, wristband that I managed to keep loose enough I could take it off. That's going back on my, let's see if I can get this right. <laughs> somewhere back it's all backwards right there it's going on my tesla tequila bottle i'll be hanging that on there so I'm, I'm creating a collection which will hopefully get bigger and bigger over time but anyway okay so i was talking mostly about software with tesla bot yesterday and i mentioned during that 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 talk when i was still in california that uh that they only are using three cameras as far as i can tell in their tesla bot but i think it's really worth touching on this i think it's very important to think about what tesla is doing and why they're doing it here so this this guy is obviously bumble c this is the you know the one that was the the version that's not so attractive looking i guess i mean i actually kind of like him i think he's kind of adorable because it, when you when you see him in motion there's just flashing lights everywhere and all of that kind of stuff so very off the shelf it looks a lot like uh what was it star wars episode one the phantom menace when anakin was like building c3po just kind of you know scrap metal and all of that kind of stuff but anyway we're going to focus mostly on the head today and I want to go back to AI day number one in August of 2020 first. So let's bring that up. So this was a, a 13 months ago, basically, just a little over a year ago. And you can see here that they're talking about actuators and that they actually do have two actuators in the neck. So one to tip the head back up, you know, this way, and one to rotate it like this. I don't know, I guess that would be the yaw direction from the head, yeah. So anyway, so, so pitch and yaw, no roll to it. Obviously, you don't really need to do this kind of thing. We already talked about that, actually, with, with Scott Walter. We talked about that a long time ago, that, te that Tesla bot was not going to be a soccer star because it would never be able to do a header because it wouldn't have that degree of freedom. Well, they've reduced that a lot since then. But so there we've got actuators. But let's take a look at this other slide here. Here are the cameras. So you can see very distinctly that there are four autopilot cameras in the head at this point. And there are also it looks to me like two more there and two more there. So their idea, and there are eight autopilot cameras on all of the vehicles, so it appeared to me at the time that what they were going to do was replicate what was in the vehicles. They were going to have sort of three more forward-facing cameras, one in the rear on the on the front, and then four body cameras to sort of give it an idea of what it's doing from the, from the body. Now, they did not talk at all about the body, but if we go back here and look, I mean, it's a little hard to tell. I don't see an awful lot of stuff there that indicates that there would be another camera. And then if we look down at this guy right here, you can see that there's a steel plate over his chest, right? Or probably aluminum, but anyway, it's not see-through. So you've got this basic concept here that there are not extra cameras in the body anymore. So clearly they have evolved their thinking about this. In addition, you can see from this image and from many, many other images, there is no degree of freedom in the head anymore. And you can certainly see that in Bumble C as well. He He's just on a stalk here, right? So there's that. And let's see, there's some other pictures here. You can see it from the side, just on a stalk, just on a stalk. There's nothing <clears throat> that is going to allow this head to move. So they have removed all degrees of freedom in the head and they've removed five cameras apparently. And I'm not just basing that on my thinking, but also from shots like this where you can see, oh, it's a little bit, here we go. You can see left pillar camera, fisheye camera, right pillar camera. So let's try to find where those things are. So the fisheye obviously is in the middle. So I'm going to assume it's in the, for, the middle of his forehead. A little bit difficult to see that because of course he's made out of, you know, it's, it's black. So it's hard to see and there's a lot of reflections of what's going on in the room. So you can't quite tell exactly what's happening happening in terms of where the fisheye is, but it's, you know, more than likely kind of like here, you know, in the middle of the forehead, this sort of area, something like that. But if we go and we look at him, <clears throat> 
from uh, that's the back so you can see the back he's completely open in bumble c there's nothing to you know there's nothing to see there so so that certainly indicates that there are no cameras or anything in the back which is interesting but again he's not going to be backing up or anything like that and if we look at him from here i believe if that right there are the side pillar cameras so that would be the left side pillar camera so it's exposed here you can actually see it from from the exposed thing obviously in the more updated prototype where you have the head here you can then see this would be the right pillar camera let's make that a little bit bigger so right there would be the right pillar camera so you can see there's a hole in his whatever that like kind of meshy stuff is that they're covering up the the top of his head by the way very attractive looking and it actually still looks a great deal like oh these are the x-ray pictures anyway it looks a great deal like the original optimus renders but so you can definitely see that there is something going on here that would be the the right pillar camera as far as i can tell and then the left pillar camera would be up here on this guy and obviously punch through and then the fisheye lens would be somewhere there so what does that allow us well the first thing we have to think about is why would they do this as opposed to having eight cameras like a, an automobile has uh, an automobile is very, very long. <laughs> it's several meters long. So it needs more cameras, you know, uh, what would you call that? Longitudinally, I guess, the stretched out direction, because as the front of the car passes someplace, you need cameras more towards the front of the vehicle. As the back of the vehicle passes someplace, you need cameras towards the back. And obviously you need to talk, you need to deal with reverse, going in reverse with an automobile there that, that's required. I've actually done a whole video about that. How you, you know, even though it's a relatively small amount of time you spend going in reverse in a car, you have to be able to see behind you. You can't back up blind. So you have to have a reverse camera in a car. For a person, obviously, we get away with two eyes. <laughs> so, you know, minimum is two eyes uh, for for a human being and or even one. I guess people can do that. But basically to have 3D vision, to be able to have stereoscopic vision, you need that. What's interesting here is, though, is that what they look like they're doing here is left pillar, right pillar, fisheye. And you can see that there is overlap and they have they're they're not showing us everything here because they talk about how they stitch it together. But basically, I think what they're doing is all of these, the fisheye is very, very wide angle. It's probably, mm, <coughs> I guess, um, maybe 120, 140 degree you know, field of view, so very, very wide. And then the pillar cameras are not quite as wide of an angle, but you can see how they easily cover. This guy appears twice. This guy barely appears twice. So there's plenty of room in these images to stitch them together, which is what they do with eight cameras in the vehicle. But again, here you've got an object like in a Tesla bot, <clears throat> which is he's he's very thin right he doesn't need to have cameras stretched out all over his body because for more or less i guess the place you could put a camera would actually be right there interestingly enough but they put uh they put a, a texas belt buckle here so i doubt that that's a camera because it looks like there's a belt buckle there but you could get away with perhaps one more camera down here in the middle of the body because you're you know a human being is stretched out vertically as opposed to horizontally so I could see they're having an extra one there. But again, it appears that there are only three cameras. They are replicating-ish a human being with some, you know, like a superhuman human being. Because um, if you think about like an owl or something, an owl has, you know, eyes. Well, an owl is a predator. <laughs> Let's take a, a, other regular birds, right? Normal birds that are not predators. They tend to have uh, eyes that are out to the side. And you can see that in fish and, and other animals that tend to be more prey than predator. They tend to have eyes out to the side so that they can see a lot of view around them. And then more predator type animals have eyes that are more towards the front. So here what we're getting is we're getting the best of both worlds. And you don't need need six eyes you don't need a whole bunch like a fly or something you don't need eight it's not necessary anymore <clears throat> and so what you can do is you can cut down the number of cameras now the argument would be that you need four cameras because you need two in the front to get stereoscopic vision and then you need the two on the side to get the extra thing obviously tesla has disagreed with that because unless unless they're hiding multiple cameras in the front now they could be again cheating here <clears throat> they could have a fisheye camera and just like the front of your tesla automobile there's a fisheye and a wide angle and um 
there's one other camera in the front. I can't remember what it is specifically for. Uh, it might just be two of regular cameras. But anyway, so you get the stereoscopic vision. But again, I don't know that you actually need that to get stereoscopic vision because you can see through this, they have created a three-dimensional world that the object can live in. So there's the person. There's the other person. There's a uh, another person sitting at a desk back here. So again, as I said yesterday, you can see that they've obviously demarcated humans as green. Uh, semantically, it needs to understand that those are human beings and that you don't want to hit them in particular. So it, it, I'm sure that there are, you know, whether it's neural nets or whether it's hard coded or something, it's, it's Asimov's first law, like don't hurt human beings, right? So that's the number one thing. So if this person, for example, walked into the Tesla bot, it would choose to go into this uh, this shelf of whatever it is, boxes and things. It would walk into that rather than the human being is my assumption because it's got a policy network that's telling it absolutely not, don't go into this area. Now, there is an interesting thing here which is that you can see that there's this little dot on the back and it is possible again, you know, we're looking at these prototypes and everything that maybe they will have a rear view camera so it can actually see out the back and maybe they'll put it right there. Cause remember again, we no longer have any degrees of freedom in the head. So this entire unit right here is going to be one solid object. It's, it's just going to turn with the robot. Now, eventually they might put, you know, mobility into the head and stuff like that. But at this point they don't. So uh, here he is leaving. And again, that's why I'm saying it's, possible that there was a camera there. I don't think so, but it is possible that he has one in his hips. It would be a little bit awkward to have a camera in the hip though, because what would happen is that, that, that that's where a lot of motion actually happens in the body. And so it would probably be a very, very shaky view if you're going to do that. So you basically, when you watch him walk, he keeps his head relatively still, just like a human being does, right? When we walk, we don't go like this all the time. We keep our heads relatively still. So anyway, <clears throat> You've got the three cameras. You can get away with that because they're wide angle. You can actually create out of three cameras a full 3D world, just like we do with our two cameras. But you get a big benefit because as I'm looking at the camera, I can see about to here, <laughs> right? So I have about 180 degrees of view if I do that without turning and looking someplace else. This obviously has a bigger view than that. It's probably more like 240 degrees or something along those lines. So it's getting close to the back. It can see all the way from back here, all the way to the front, and it can reconstruct the 3D world. So cool, we've got three cameras and we're able to create a 3D world out of that. Why, again, did Tesla make decisions like this? Well, what is Elon Musk's mantra? The best part is no part. If you've got eight cameras, you've got the expense of eight cameras, you've got the computational expense of eight cameras. Remember, this guy only has a 2.3 kilowatt hour battery pack. So every single bit of electronics that is running is sucking down power out of Tesla bot. And that's making him... Uh, you know, it's making it usable less amount of time during the day. So that's number one is you're reducing power draw. You don't need it because you've got probably these are the 5.4 megapixel Samsung cameras. Again, I'm assuming we're talking hardware four here, and I'm assuming that we're talking about the, the latest generation of cameras that they're going to be using in vehicles that they haven't even officially put into the vehicles yet, but that they're definitely using that for Tesla bot to, I mean, why wouldn't you do that, right? If you're not going to release this thing for six months to a year optimistically, why would you not put in the latest generation of, of hardware into this? So anyway, so you've got very high resolution cameras, so you can get away with only three. He's moving relatively slowly in the scene, just a couple of miles an hour, as opposed to a vehicle that's moving quickly. So again, it doesn't have to be quite as exact. You can see the uh, 3D occupancy network, and I'm going to do, as soon as I get the time, I'm going to do an episode about that again. And I did one um, recently when Ashok did his talk. But anyway, you can see that this, this occupancy network, um, Ashok told me it was 30 centimeters on a side for the vehicle. I believe that is significantly smaller here. Maybe, mm, I don't know, <laughs> at, at a guess, maybe five centimeters on a side per box per voxel that we're talking about here. But anyway, you've got you've got a relatively coarse mesh that it's creating. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, obviously, as it gets close to objects, it has to have a more perfect understanding of that because it needs to be able to do things like pick up the handle, which is really skinny, of a watering can. So there are, you know, there's things going on. And again, I'll talk about that in another episode. So stay tuned for that one. But anyway, to create this world that he's in, 
he needs to have all of this information, but it doesn't have to be super high resolution. So again, you can get away with fewer cameras. You can, you can segment this scene. Uh, panoptic segmentation did a video about that as well. But basically that just means creating, understanding the world. Panoptic segmentation, this is actually a good indication of that is this image instead but it's like here this guy is a guy this green thing is a guy oh, this is a guy this is a guy a person and then these objects here are unimportant but you can also see in this scene you've got panoptic segmentation where this sort of teal color of the hand is robot green human beings white don't bump into that stuff and red is obviously the target area because it's trying to water these plants so it's like you need to water these plants and then blue i guess would be the the color of the the object you're holding or something like that so right so you've got a panoptic segmentation oh and then purple is the floor of course <laughs> you need to know where the floor is so that you're standing on it so it's able to do all of this stuff with three cameras why would you put in more cameras that's just more expense more processing power a lot more work for very, very little return. So if the if the robot is never going to back up, if it's never gonna do Michael Jackson's moonwalk, it does, doesn't need a camera in the back. It doesn't need ones on its body, apparently, because what it can do is it can actually bend its torso down so it can actually look where it needs to go. It doesn't need any mo mobility in the head because it's not gonna play soccer or have to turn like an owl or something like that because it can just turn around. So they've minimized everything here. They've removed a whole bunch of parts, whole bunch of complexity, a whole bunch of cost, because remember, every one of these actuators is expensive, right? And every one of these cameras is expensive. They're not hugely expensive, but they are expensive. You've removed uh, processing power. You've removed battery needs. All of this stuff is reducing, 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 reducing. So you can see what's going on here. This, this camera situation gives you an indication of exactly what Tesla's sort of modus operandi is, which is always, how do we mass manufacture this object? How do we make this inexpensive to build and build lots and lots of, you know, millions of copies of this thing? How do we do that? And the way that you do that is you just keep removing parts. Now, I assume over time, just like the Model 3 was when they built the Model 3 originally, it had a whole bunch of parts that were all spot welded together and all of that kind of stuff. Clearly, Tesla is already learned because <laughs> this guy is significantly more put together, I guess, than the original Model 3 was under the hood, so to speak. So they clearly learned already, but over time you would imagine that even if the form factor stays pretty much like this over time, internally, they're going to be stripping away parts and stripping away parts and stripping away parts. So the 2027 version of Tesla bot might look very similar to this guy, but it might cost 50 or 60% less to build because there are fewer parts. And they've also, of course, started to manufa mass manufacture these things. And so that'll bring the cost down a lot. So anyway, I think it's really worth looking at the cameras. I think this is an excellent example of what Tesla is doing. They're, they don't have LiDAR. They don't have um, uh, ultrasonics. They don't have any of that stuff that all these other robotics companies use in order for these things to understand their, their world around them. What Tesla is doing instead is leveraging the full self-driving vision system that they already have for their cars. That is the ultimate secret sauce of Tesla bot is that they don't have to have expensive, fragile, you know, you look at those little LiDAR things that are spinning around on these other robots. Those things are fragile. <laughs> they can break easily. They're very expensive. They they need a lot of maintenance. So you're looking at something here that you can produce quickly, doesn't need a lot of maintenance. And what it does is it substitutes a brain for a lot of very high tech equipment that you're putting into it. And even when it comes down to cameras, they've got the minimum number of cameras. This guy's not a four eye. He's actually a three eye. So there you go. All right. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting interesting and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it because that's how YouTube works. And also, of course, consider subscribing for more of this because I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of AI day two things. Uh, as always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. I really do appreciate everything you all have done for me. These trips have been amazing and your support in them has been really instrumental. And of course, don't forget about the merch store and all of that other good stuff. Links in the description. Uh, Tesla, you know, we're solar roof, battery, power wall, geez, <laughs> solar roof, power wall, anything on Amazon, all of that kind of stuff. Anyway, I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.